Welcome, I'm Brian Hayes. I'm a Salesforce and Pardot consultant with Rotiv. We're an official Salesforce partner and we help small businesses automate their processes. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use product schedules. So I'm in Salesforce here. I'm gonna open up an opportunity and add some products. I'm just pulling up a random one here. Here's Jake's wood shop cleaning supplies. Under products, I'm gonna click add products. And we have a bunch of different product records here. Now, some of these products might have schedules enabled and some of them might not. That depends on how it was initially set up. But I know that SLA Gold has a schedule by default set up and so does Mini Lotion Bottles annual subscription. So I'm gonna check both those products and hit next. And then for the quantity here, just one for the SLA Gold, because that's a, a service level agreement. And then for the mini lotion bottles, let's say we're gonna send them 120 bottles over the course of a year. Then I'll hit save. And now we've got these two products that have been added and the default schedule has been applied automatically. If you click into the opportunity product record, you can go to the related tab and you'll see schedules is there and you can see how that's been broken out. So when it comes to this, this SLA gold product, it's taking the total amount, $30,000, and then splitting it up across four different installments. And it looks like it's quarterly. But for this particular customer, maybe that's not appropriate. So you can click reestablish schedule to set in the parameters and uh, generate those schedules records again, or you can edit the schedule. So if I click edit, I'm starting with the records that are already there. And then I might wanna modify this. And let's say they're not gonna pay equally over the four quarters, maybe up front, they're gonna pay half the cost and then they're gonna pay the rest across the three subsequent quarters. So if we're gonna pay 50% up front, I can just change this to 15,000. And then beneath that, that would leave 15,000, which would be $5,000 per quarter afterwards. So here we have a schedule that has been front-loaded. So the really nice thing about these schedules, whether it's revenue or quantity that we're seeing over a time period, is that you can customize it. It's very, very flexible to fit whatever the needs of that particular contract are, whatever the needs of that customer are. And this certainly is important on the quantity side. If you have a contract to deliver a certain amount of product over a period of time, it's not always even from month to month or quarter to quarter. Sometimes it's front loaded, sometimes it's back loaded. It depends on the seasonality of that particular deal. So I made my adjustment. At the bottom, you can see total revenue is $30,000. If I did my math wrong, you can see at the bottom, it's, it's adding it up for me. And you know, the amount we're about to charge the customer just went up 2,500 bucks. Okay, put that back to 5,000 and hit save. So that's one way to change the schedule. You can just manually change it as you see fit. The other way to do it is click reestablish schedule. When you do that, it gives you the parameters of the schedule for you to modify, and then it generates those schedule records for you automatically. So let's say the start date is actually gonna be later in the year. Let's say we're, they're not gonna start paying us till September 1st, because we've got a backlog. So we'll say September 1st is the, is the start date, and we're not actually gonna, they're not gonna pay us quarterly, they're gonna pay us monthly. So I'll choose monthly, number of installments. We'll switch from four to 12 because it's a year. Uh, and then revenue will keep at 30,000. And now schedule type. We can either divide the amount, we can divide the revenue into multiple installments, or we can repeat the revenue with each installment. So in this case, what we're really doing is we're taking a service level agreement and we're taking that total value for the year and breaking it up into four payments. So dividing the amount into multiple installments is appropriate but you might want to repeat the amount for each installment if you're selling something like a software license over a number of months. Maybe it's an annual contract and the cost per, per seat on that software is 50 bucks a month. If you want the quote to show $50 on, that, on the quote that you send them, then you might wanna repeat that amount, that $50 seat for each month that they're gonna be paying for the service. So you've got both options here. Most of the time I see people dividing the total amount across the time periods, but depending on what you're selling and how you, you wanna pitch it, you can do either way. So I'm gonna hit save, and then in the background, it's recreated the schedule. So if I hit view all, you know, it's still gonna add up to $30,000, but it's broken into $2,500 increments for us, it's done the math. 
And you can see it starts on September 1st and then goes on from there for a year. That's how you can modify a default schedule that's been set up for a specific product. Uh, you can also delete the schedule. Maybe it's just not needed for this particular opportunity. And this is what the screen looks like if there was no default schedule, but product schedules are enabled. If they're enabled, you'll see a button here that says establish schedule. If it's not enabled for that product, there'll be no button here. So have a system admin check the box on the product record that would enable it if you need it. And then hit establish schedule and we're back to that same screen. What's the start date? What's the time period? What's the amount, etc. And that's about it. It's pretty easy once you've got product schedules enabled to be able to customize them to fit each customer. And it's a really valuable tool when you're trying to forecast your revenue or trying to show what your product demand is going to be over a period of time. I hope you found that valuable. If you did, please hit the like button and click subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this in your feed. Thanks for watching.